What's up YouTube, it's LDS Reliance. I'm back in the solar shed for the final episode in this series. It's been a couple weeks, I had some personal matters to attend to. Now I'm back, I've spent a couple days out here in this shed cleaning things up, making room for everything I want to go in here, cleaning out some of the clutter, and so it's time to go ahead and wrap this series up. That will involve installing this remote meter for the TriStar charge controller. Uh, we're going to add this uh, server fan as a ventilation uh, fan for the box, for the battery box, and we're going to mount this inverter, which is a 24 volt inverter. It will allow me to plug in my laptop or plug in lights, whatever I need to do out here. As you can see, I've already unboxed and plugged in this remote meter. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I understood how it worked and some of the settings and so forth so that I would not uh, have to install it and uninstall it a couple times. So I wanted to do that off camera. Um, don't waste your time with all that. But uh, we will mount that today. Um, we will get the, the fan installed and the inverter installed. The fan, however, runs off of 12 volt DC. So I'm going to be uh, installing a separate 12 volt solar panel system in my shed. Remember this system is 24 volt. Um, so I could use a, a voltage converter to drop the voltage from 24 down to 12 but I already had plans to install a, 20, a 12 volt solar panel system here because I have some LED lights, uh, a garden watering system and so forth that use 12 volt, so, uh, 12 volt DC so I might as well run this device as well. So I will hook that up and I will connect it to a battery and show you how it works but it's not going to be live today. So we'll start with the fan. I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole on this side so that it's closest to the door for ventilation purposes, but also so that it doesn't get blocked in case I put some tubs or something on this side for storage. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a hole, and then we're going to screw in. There's four little hole screw holes around the sides. We'll go ahead and screw that in around it. Okay, so there it's mounted. Um, the air comes this direction, and I put it on the inside just so that there's nothing, you know, to catch anything on the outside. Um, so I will go ahead and touch these leads to the battery, and you'll be able to see that it, it works. But like I said, it's not going to run today. So it's kind of loud, but it moves a lot of air, and it only used 0.15 amps. So, um, you know, only a couple watts, basically, and that'll be able to run around the clock with no problems and not really tax my system. So anyway, that part's done. Let's go ahead and move on to mounting the remote meter. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remove these connections. This is for the meter. This is for a, a, this is an Ethernet cable that can connect to the laptop, so you can program it. Uh, I will also be using that to connect to my home network, um, so that I can you know monitor the vitals of this from inside my house without ever having to come inside. So anyway, first I'm going to disconnect these. We're going to put on the faceplate. We're going to route these cables through uh, one of these um, these connectors that comes out the side through these knockouts so that we can put on the front plate and pretty this up a little bit. Okay, we've got the wire secured here. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some comments from someone saying that, oh, the, you shouldn't run the uh, communication wires that close to power wires. That's probably true, although I, don't, I, I know that's true with AC. I don't know how true that is with DC. I ran this for now. We'll see if it doesn't work. I can always redo it later. And I'll go ahead and put the front faceplate on and we'll move on to actually mounting the meter itself above the uh, counter height. Okay, so I grabbed this piece of quarter inch plywood and I'm going to mount it flush with this uh, support piece under here, this two by four. So what I'm gonna do, basically there's a, a stud over here and I'm going to attach on the back with a couple of uh, hinges 
that this will swing out so that I can get to behind it and change things or do whatever I want. The rest of the time when it's attached, there will be a couple screws on this side to hold it, you know, so that all the pressure is not on the hinges. But basically this will, this will be the wall where all of uh, any switches, uh, any critical switches will be on there, uh, all the meters. I will also have some meters showing the 12 volt system at some point, so that's why this panel is so big. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and attach the um, hinges to the back, get it attached to that stud, and we'll cut a hole. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put it, but we'll cut a hole for this meter, get that mounted. Okay, I've got it mounted. Um, I haven't uh, connected on the other side, but I'm not done with it yet. So it's on these hinges that are mounted on the inside. And so basically, if I need to access the back of the panel or I want to add another meter, instead of taking the whole thing down, I can just swing it out like that and gain access to the back of it. So now I'm going to go ahead and measure and cut a panel. I'm going to put it at about my head height uh, up in this area. I'm going to cut out a hole so that uh, the back uh, electronics can stick through. And then we'll go ahead and get it mounted flush. All right, there we have it. Uh, the board is mounted. The hole is cut. The meter is flush mounted, uh, the wire is run down to the charge controller and everything's connected and it is working. So let's go ahead and see if we can zoom in on the meter a little bit. Okay, so here's what the meter looks like up close. As you can see, it gives you kind of a snapshot real time of what's going on with the charge controller. So this is gonna be really cool. Um, in the past, I've just had kind of those little uh, green or red uh, LED um, or LCD I should say um, meters that show voltage or current or whatever so this actually shows a bunch of different things and you can kind of cycle through um, well that's the settings you can cycle through different parameters and see things so anyway uh, really cool addition this it's a little over hundred dollars for this meter but I felt like it was well worth it um, that's the price that I saved over the Midnight Classic anyways. Um, this, this was roughly $125 to $150 cheaper than the Midnight Classic, so I could afford to get the remote meter. In its defense, the Midnight Classic does have this on the front panel of the, the charge controller itself, but this is actually even better because I can mount this wherever I want within about 30 yards. Okay, unfortunately, as for this power inverter, there's no way to mount it. It doesn't come with any mounting um, options. This is uh, basically I guess just for a, an RV or a, a semi truck or something that has 24 volt native. So uh, instead of get a rigging something and, and mounting it with some creative manner which I normally would do, I'm going to take this and use this inside the house and get a different inverter um, so unfortunately I won't be mounting this but let's just go over a quick little recap of what we done we've done and show off the whole system real quickly so the first thing we did was completely tear out all of the electronics that were in here from the previous solar panel system I went and got these new Trojan T105 RE batteries and installed a hydrolink system for easy watering and maintenance and then wired it all up so that they're all in series. We installed a new charge controller which uses maximum power point tracking technology to give me more efficiency and better production. We installed some safety equipment to make sure that everything was safe. We vented the battery box to prevent buildup of dangerous gases. And we installed a panel on the top of my desktop here or ca countertop where I will be able to monitor everything at a glance and start adding other meters and switches and things to be my master control center for both my 24 volt and my 12 volt system. Anyway, that wraps up this video series. In the future, I will do some videos on how to uh, program the charge controller, how to read this meter, some of the different things that I've done off camera, but I'll do those in separate little videos in the future. So stick around for that. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time. And now for a shameless plug for more subscribers, please consider hitting subscribe to see more great content in the future.